Last year, I had the pleasure of visiting the fascinating country of Japan. That chick kind of looks how I feel right now, just sensory overload. After only having been in the country for a few hours, a guy approached me and told me about a free concert happening a few blocks away. I was just walking down the street, some guys like, um, Japanese idols are putting on a concert. All right. In Japanese pop culture, idols are young, manufactured starlets marketed to be admired for their cuteness and innocence. The performance ended up being exactly what I expected. However, when I saw who the fans were that had come to watch, I was shocked. They were all dudes who not only knew the dance moves to every song, but also the lyrics. And keep in mind, these weren't young kids. They were all grown men who ranged in age from their 20s to their 70s. You got middle-aged men legitimately fangirling over these Japanese idol contestants. Needless to say, I found the whole thing really fucking weird. Especially when I learned it was actually commonplace for most idols fan bases to be made up of predominantly older men. The Big J Journal and me needed to learn more about this strange cultural phenomenon. So I decided to go undercover in Tokyo's Akihabara district, where the Japanese idol movement was born. I'm the Wonton Don. This story today on One Hour. All right, we're about to go undercover at an idol's lounge. That's what uh, the girl groups are called that middle-aged Japanese men fangirl over. And you know, like I'm not gonna pass judgment on it. Yeah, it's weird, but I'm not gonna judge it until I've fully experienced it. Downstairs in the idol lounge, I found a room full of white collar males patiently waiting for the idol performances to begin. Everyone there seemed extremely shy and reserved. However, then the music started. And when the first Japanese idol group came on stage, the place got litter than lit. It was like being at a Beyonce concert. If Beyonce was still a teenager and all her fans were dudes in their 30s. The energy in the room was infectious. After the first set of songs, I headed back out to the lounge where I found a bunch of men waiting in line to meet their favorite idol, whom they could pay for a handshake, autograph, or photo. I'm from USA. Yeah. USA. Yeah, USA. USA. I met an extremely patriotic idol named Yuki and decided to shell out 10 bucks to get a Polaroid picture with her. That was definitely worth 10 bucks. It was so nice to meet you. I love you. I love you. I found love in a hopeless place. This is amazing. But I wasn't there looking for love. I had come to gain a better understanding of why so many adult males in Japan are obsessed with these teenage girl bands. Unfortunately though, my investigation was hindered by the fact no one could speak English. Who is your favorite? Which girl do you like the best? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who is your favorite? Yeah. Who is your favorite? Yeah. Oh, okay. No one can speak English. Unable to communicate with the people around me, I figured the only thing left to do was head back in and observe the rest of the show. I was making zero progress on my investigative report, but instead had just become one of the creepy guys I had set out to investigate. I mean, look at that chick in the middle. She's got to be like 12 years old. I decided to cut a few journalistic corners and just googled why this level of sketchiness seems socially acceptable in Japan. Turns out the reasons for this cultural phenomena are quite complicated, but I'll try to paraphrase. In modern Japanese society, many men feel they are financially or emotionally incapable of taking care of a wife. Instead, they choose to obsess over idols rather than take on the responsibility of a real romantic relationship. 
Plenty of people in the U.S. also have trouble maintaining relationships due to societal pressures. However, instead of looking to teenage pop groups to fill that void, they turn to gambling, video games, and Pornhub. Somehow, that seems like the less creepy option. But hey, it's not my culture to judge. If you want to learn more about this subculture, I suggest checking out the documentary Tokyo Idols that was released in 2017. I left the club deciding that idol culture wasn't for me. However, sometimes, when I'm having a bad day and the world is beating me down, I take out the Polaroid of Yuki and I and think about how much simpler my life would be if I had just stayed in Japan and became her groupie.